For the first time in the long days I'd spend in a new house, I woke up with a smile on my face. And so should you, because hello you, and welcome to some kind of Fox content, or should I say, kind of spooky content. If you're tired of uh, me saying that, don't worry, because this is the final episode of Spooktober. I hope you have enjoyed it. It's been a little stressful, because I had to upload two episodes each day for Spooktober, and that was uh, an endeavor. But now we come to the end, and with that we also come to the end of Tiny Bunny. At least for episode 4. There are gonna be an extra uh, chapter of Tiny Bunny, but that hasn't released yet. So we are currently stuck to episode or chapter 4. And that is what we will conclude today. I don't know how much is left, so this video might end up being hours long. Because I have to finish it now. Because I said I wanted to finish Tiny Bunny in the span of Spooktober. So here we are. Welcome to the final episode of Tiny Bunny and welcome to the final episode of Spooktober. This time, happiness had a tight grip on me. I stretched, enjoying the sweet sensation with every cell of my body. Outside, I could hear the joyful chirping of beautiful red-chested bullfinches who celebrated the bright January sun. Their chirping granted me hope that the naked forest outside my window would someday turn into a lost paradise for my parents and my little sister. The corridor was filled with dark barks and the patter of tiny feet. The door to my bedroom flew open, greeting me with a warm breeze and the aroma of freshly made coffee. Oh, that sounds lovely just about now. Oh, with the little doggy! Alia stood in the doorway, shining with happiness, holding the cute Shulka, who wiggled both her body and her tail. Oh, look, Tasha, look! Papa said she can stay! Tears of joy formed in my little sister's eyes. <laughs> I have my own dog now! I couldn't help but jump up from the bed upon hearing this wonderful news. That's Shulka! Uh, Shulka, no, her name is Princess. Right, your highness. The dog barked in agreement. Tok tok, можно к вам? Knock knock, can I come in? Oh, everyone looks so happy. To my complete surprise, Dad stepped through the doorway, smiling and hugging Mom, which was outright bizarre. Как тебе пополнение? What do you think of our new family member? Мне эта дуреха под колеса бросилась, еле вырулил. This idiot threw herself under my car. I barely avoided her. I got my car scratched. Thought I'd choke her with my own two hands. Then I looked her in the eye, and there I saw... How should I put it? Intelligence! Yeah, and the poor thing was shaking all over. Ну, говорю, ладно, доедешь со мной до дома и сиденье не обгадишь, тогда оставайся. And then I said, all right, if you manage to make it home without soiling my seats, I'll let you stay. Принцессы не гадят. Ha, princess can't tell anything. <laughs> we laughed in unison, just like the good old days when every little thing could easily make us burst out laughing. Чего замолчал? Давай, продолжай. Ah, well, why, do, why did you stop? Continue your stories. Mom gave Dad a cunning look, and he turned away, red as a beet. They were acting like total kids. Oh, there's more good news. Your dad got a promotion. I shouldn't exactly be happy about it, since the chief accountant went missing and all. 
Но, как говорится, нет худа без But, добра. You know, for us it's a silver lining. Это значит, тебя чаще не будет Does that дома? mean you'll be away from home more? Это значит двойную надбавку плюс yeah, that means double the bonuses. Правильно, Карина. That's right, Карина. Так что готовьтесь. На следующей неделе нас всех ждет семейное путешествие. Which means you should all prepare for a family trip next week. My heart started beating faster after those words. Куда? Where? Alia even loosened her grip on the stray. <gasps> Неужели в Макдональдс? Oh, are we going to McDonald's? Скажи, что же, Оль. Come on, Alia. Бери выше. Aim Мы higher. давно уже планировали эту поездку. We've been planning this trip for a long time, but something always messed it up. Вы уж простите нас, ребята. Ah, we're sorry about that, kids. Mom wiped away a tear with her fist. Да ладно тебе, Карин. Ah, it's okay, Karina. Now it's all in the past. В общем, собирайте чемоданы, летим в Диснейленд. Anyway, gather your things. We're flying to Disneyland. Something about this seems ominous, like it's a dream or the afterlife, maybe even. Oh, I don't know. My sister and I jumped up to the ceiling with joy. The dog also got excited from that passionate speech and joined us. Ура! Ура! Disneyland! Disneyland! <laughs> Our jubilant screams filled the house, rushed through the attic and the drain pipes, flew across the front yard and sneaked into the shining white forest, taking the scary D word away with it. I swore that I'll remember this day forever. The day when my parents finally dropped their derisive masks and underneath them were the faces of parents we've always knew and loved. Lilia Pavlona still hadn't returned to school after Katya went missing, so today I was able to get a good night's sleep and went to school when it was already bright outside. The trail led to a snow-white plain with blackened houses in the background. They pumped out grey smoke that carried the smell of birch and pine logs. The freezing cold of the night had finally let up. It fell, fell into slumber under the earthly sunlight. Ice sparkles appeared on the white caps atop the houses. I stopped, confident that, no, that nobody could spoil my good mood today. Not even my personal tormentor, Pyat Tifanov, or his nasty crony, Byasha. Not even the shining knife that threatened to cut me up like a dead fish. Not even the mix of disdain and pity in Polina's rare glances. All of that was left in the past, forgotten like a bad dream. All of that was gone forever. A cow let out a long moo somewhere in the distance. I fell, I fell out of my fleeting daydream and walked forward, crunching white with the snow blanket under my soles. Fluffy clouds floated above my head. I recognized the friendly shapes of animal kits in them. <laughs> Suddenly a snowball landed on the back of my head. Girlish laughter that reminded me of a small ringing bell in the spring breeze tickled my ears. <laughs> I turned around expecting to see her, my lovely guide into the dream world, my dear Alicia. Yet instead of a fox girl, Paulina stood on the trodden path behind me with her fateful violin case in hand. I bet Petrov Varon считаешь. Got your heads in the clouds again, Har huh, Petrov? <laughs> she lunged at me with contagious laughter, locking her arms around my neck. I just stood there in awe, drowning in the sweet aroma of her perfume. <laughs> did, did something happen? She flashed me an embarrassed smile. I saw her cornflower color colored eyes gleam. Дедушка мой, он... My grandpa, he... Он снова может ходить, представляешь? He can walk again. Can you believe it? There's something wrong. В это даже сельский врач не верил. А он будто на зло ему встал и пошел. 
the local doctor had no faith in him. But it's like he stood up and started walking just to spite him. Oh, this is the happiest day of my life, Anton. She dug her face deep into my chest, tightened her grip on my neck as if I was more than just a friend to her. I started looking around, anxious. Polina, uh, um, Polina, somebody could see us. Are you worried about Pietifanov? I'm so sorry, I can't pronounce the names correctly. Then you're worried for nothing. He has not been seen for a while. I cautiously parted with Polina, trying to understand whether it was some sort of prank or the truth. Wait, you don't believe me? That officer, Lieutenant Tikhonov, came to our house just last night. He said that Byasha, along with his body Ramka, went missing. There are too much good things are going on right now. This can't be a coincidence. A group of skiers glided past us, straight into the forest. Polina leaned into my ear, sharing her whisper with me, her eyes still locked on the skiers. As far as I know, Tikhonov suspect that all the previous cases were Pyatifanov's fault. No way. I was shocked myself. There are rumors that Romka, well, went off the deep end. I mean, I'm not exactly surprised to hear that. What do you mean? Haven't you heard? He's from a very troubled family. I don't even want to imagine what had been going on in their home. Romka always seemed excessively ag aggressive to me, always angry at everyone without a good reason. Now the darkness that he harbored within overflowed into the outside world and led multiple small innocent souls to their demise as well as his own. It was hard to believe, but the first time I laid my eyes on Romka, I thought that things would end this way. Uh, let's move or we're gonna be late. <laughs> Polina grabbed my hand and started running along the village road, accompanied by joyful laughter. With every step, every laugh and every joke, the warmth I thought I'd forgotten en enveloped my heart more and more. The all-consuming feeling of falling in love came back to me, this time for good it seemed. I tried letting go of Polina's hand near the classroom entrance, embarrassed that our classmates might taunt us. But it was as if Polina didn't care at all. She only gripped my palm even harder while opening the door. And she was right. Now that the cunning Katya, the heartless Ramka and the sneering Byasha were gone, our class looked as if it was sanitized from parasites. It became friendlier and kinder. I didn't get looks overflowing with hatred anymore, there was nobody to spit a ball of chewed paper at me through an empty shell of a ball pen. I sat at my lonely desk when Polina joined me. I wasn't surprised at all. She was so charming that I could call her my muse. A wave of inspiration hit me and I couldn't help but to pull my sketchbook out of my bag. I licked the pencil lead, my eyes glued to my model. She smiled at me again. What's on your mind? No worries, a professional at work here. I drafted the shape of her mesmerizing figure. You know, I've watched you from here often. She glanced at her former desk, then fixed a strand of hair behind her ear in embarrassment. Really? 
I outlined her cute cheeks with multiple white lines. It was the first time I was able to grasp somebody's proportions so easily. Paulina. Paulina. Что? Yes, Anton. Anton. She froze in place, afraid of disrupting my work with one wrong move and dispelling the magic of the moment. Наклонись, пожалуйста, сюда. Lean here a bit more, please. Вот так, да. Хорошо. Yes, like this. Good. <sighs> Choking from anxiousness, Polina loosened the knot on her neckerchief. Я всегда хотел тебя. I always wanted to draw you. Our eyes met. Oh, Anton. My pencil slid across the paper furiously, adding the shading to her chest. Скажи, ты согласна стать героиней моего комикса? Say, would you like to become the main heroine in my comic? Pleasant shivers ran across her body. She rolled her eyes back, enraptured. Да! Да! Yes, yes! Как долго я ждала этих слов, милый! I've been waiting for you to ask, darling. This, something's off. I cannot shake the feeling that this is all, like, wrong. The lead couldn't endure all of the tension and cracked, bursting into a million tiny pieces. I couldn't believe my eyes when I looked at the drawing. I was looking at a terrible daub, in the place where Polina's face was just a second ago now rested some sort of formless mess. It took me some time to realize that I was sitting alone in an empty classroom. I, f I knew it. With only the specks of dust flying in the moonlight as my company. It was dark outside. My classmates, Polina, the feeling of euphoria, all of them were gone. Somebody wrote down a nursery rhyme on the blackboard with a piece of chalk, but some of the words were wiped out and I could only read bits and pieces. One, two, bunny, meat. I was no longer smirking like an idiot. I stood up, pinched myself on the wrist, a ringing silence engulfed me. There was a taste of vomit in my mouth and my ears bust like fr from an endless scream, full of despair and horror. Hey, who are you? Hey, is, is there anybody out there? Shadows swarmed in the corridor. I walked past boarded up classrooms, past the rotten spouts on the wall and silver, silvery cobwebs. Spiders crawled under the ceiling. Lamps flickered anxiously. Oh boy. I stood before the notice board, stunned. Hundreds of new photos were added to those of Simeon and Katja. Black and white printouts were glued on top of each other. The horrific college of childish faces stared at me with empty eye sockets. Unable to endure the torturing stare of those watchful gaping holes, I ran out of the school. I crossed the front yard and reached the road where the wind was whipping up powdery snow. No people, no cars, no birds. Low clouds got stuck on chimneys. Windows that looked like they were painted over with ink. Photos of missing people enveloped lampposts and fences like paper skin. Mostly kids, but some adults too. It felt like all the people who once lived in this village now became black and white ghosts in the photos with a person missing label. I dragged my feet forward along the dead street. Some houses had their windows smashed. The wind made itself at home there, wandering the rooms. Every gust made the front door swing. Kids' coats hung from the fences. Their sleeves moved, stretched out towards me. An empty village, an empty husk. What happened here? 
Noah thrown waste bin rumbled across the back alley. Something inside flashed the window frames of the charred village store. I ran away from its soothy facade, then heard a guttural roar coming from the well. I started walking faster, trying not to pay any mind to the darkness inside the front yards, inside the bloody dark houses, inside the crooked shacks. The moon appeared from under the clouds. Something flew over my head in this straining silence. As if a crop duster flew from one roof to another, a huge shadow loomed over me. I rushed to the right, hoping that I wasn't noticed. A small green house in front of me was my shelter. I pushed the gate, crouched and scampered towards the porch. I talked at the doorknob, the front door was open. A wheelchair rolled out of the darkness, almost hitting me, tumbled down the stairs, clanging with its wheels and stopped near an apple tree. I followed it with round eyes, then turned my gaze inside the house again. The corridor was obscured by, obscured by the dark, empty frames on the walls, glass shards on the floor. Yes, doctor. Is there anybody here? I heard growling in reply. From around the corner at the end of the corridor, a furry paw appeared and after it, a scary beast face with a pair of burning eyes. A huge overweight beast crawled out on its belly, writhing like a snake. It could barely fit inside the corridor's mouth. It squeezed, it squeezed forward, clawing at the floorboards. Its moss clanged like a bear trap inches away from my face. The beast got stuck. It banged its paws on the wall, spitting saliva in every direction. I turned around. I needed to get the hell out of this nightmare. A hunchback owl, bigger than an average human, landed near the front gate and stood in my way. Its beak kept on clicking. A snow pile bulged nearby and something reminiscent, reminiscent of a giant shrew crawled out to the outside. I fell to my knees as, as if praying to these elderly creatures. A figure draped in a dirty fox scalp crawled out of a dark hole, smiling with all its teeth. Its tail dragged after it, just a piece of vertebra laced in torn sinews. The creature's bodies became extremely distorted and I decided I was going insane. They seemed small to me one moment, as small as a child, only to stretch higher than any of the desolate houses t uh, the next. Man-eating creatures towered over me, something kept on writhing in their stomachs as if looking for a way out. The longer they stared at me, the wider their twisted smiles, their death masks became. We've had such a long feast. The mutilated fox taxidermy mouth licked its lips. Its tongue looked like a black centipede, longer than my forearm. The nasty insect ran between the razor-sharp teeth and dropped into the bottomless pit that could swallow the whole world. Good old sweet meat, juicy meat. We devour it and we won't stop. There was nothing human about their speech, 
It was all just animalistic growls and bird-like whistles. But I was able to understand every word as if we were speaking the same language. It's a shame you couldn't catch up with us, bunny. You couldn't bite the moon. You stole my food, traitors. You refuse to eat your family, remember? But... Hoot hoot, pathetic meat, worthless meat. You are absolutely useless, brother. You make me sick. Grr, shame, shame! Indescribable horror gripped me when the laughing beast held their clawed paws towards me. Then suddenly, the thing that pretended to be a fox started barking loudly. Fools, it is his time to bring the treats. Good for nothing! Who'd who'd let him fulfill his mission? We'll be waiting for some meat from you tomorrow night or else. Or else. Or else. Or else. Or else we'll eat your entire family. The monsters formed a circle around me and started dancing. I screamed. Huge eyes, fangs, claws flashed in front of me, blurring into a string of colorful spots and smudges. One, two, time to play with you. Three, four, five, the owl will arrive. Six on end, the wolf's gray fur will stand. Seven, eight, stomp your hooves in weight. A fox face protruded from the fuzzy lights that the beastly carcasses turned into. For the fox and for the bear. Bunny, tasty meals prepare. A desperate cry, my cry, rumbled across the back streets of the desolate village. I will, I will, pre I will prepare. The circle broke up and ran, and I ran for my life. I felt like I was running into a snare trap. My head was splitting, ugly images danced inside it, colliding, falling over, getting up and dancing again. One, two. They flapped their wings, poked my face with their beaks, and their salivating moths. Three, four, five. They howled and jumped around and my eardrums were ready to pop, either from their screams or from the eternal pressure that fractured my skull from within. Six. My winter hat obscured my vision and it seemed like the whole sky tilted, like a roof that's about to collapse. Seven, eight. Snow crumbled from the sky like plaster. I ran through the empty street, through the icy world, chased by a pack of wild beasts. Yet I couldn't see anybody when I turned around. 
I shut my eyes and hopped away, away from the ritual dance that went inside my flared up mind. I squeezed my ears with my palms to suppress the noise. I just wanted to stop my head from cracking open. The sunrise found me deep inside the forest. Thank you for completing episode 4. We are deeply grateful for everyone who purchased the game in early access. All the profits will go toward further development of the game. Okay, so there wasn't as much left as I thought. Um, but here we are at the end of episode 4. And what we thought was a beautiful beginning turned into a dire, dire and dark end. And with that comes also the end of Spooktober. Again, I really hope you have enjoyed what I've put out for you. Uh, even though it was a bit stressful, I am glad I did it as I did, because we managed to get a lot of horror games completed. And uh, I think we did Spooktober justice. I hope you feel the same. But for now, I thank you so much for watching, and until that next time, a uh, bye!